So last time we did basic saving, we have the opening of the file at the beginning. Uh, so whenever we load the game, we get all the information from the save.txt. And we have here the saving. So we execute this function every minute. Uh, if you haven't seen this part of the tutorial and you want to follow along, you can press on the corner, I think it's that one, and you can go to the previous video, but otherwise it's very simple. What we want to do now is that whenever we start clicking here and we upgrade the auto clickers, we want to get also this information like how many we have and what's the current price uh, to the save file uh, so that when we close it and we open again we still have that information here we are only saving how many we have because it's only storing the data here the count so what i'm gonna go over today is going to give you like a general idea on how you can start saving a lot of data that you want from different uh, nodes to a save file. First of all, since I know that I will be accessing the information on these nodes, I will want to group them. Right now they are just here in the wild, so let's create a node. And this node will contain the rest of them. We can actually call this auto clickers clicker container okay so this is the node that we're gonna access whenever we want to save the information the rest of the nodes we don't really need to save like the animation it doesn't matter when it is uh the timers is something that's gonna execute no matter what this button is also going to be always the same so this is really the only part that we need to access but before we start with the saving we need to clear up the code a little bit because if you remember these auto clickers are a separate scene and they have a lot of things inside of them. They are kind of complicated. I rushed them a little bit when I was doing the translation. So we're going to clear this code up. And whenever that is clear, we will go back again to the save and load functions. And we're going to get that information properly to this. Since we are doing a lot of stuff here when we press and also we are updating the labels and stuff, Let's go ahead and create a function for updating, which it will contain all the information that we want to update on a single run instead of doing it all the time. It's going to take one argument, which is going to be the new value, what is like the amount that we're going to change, and that is going to affect the amount. So right now what we can do is start replacing this. So this is the function that we're going to use. And here instead of amount plus one, we can replace it and do amount plus one. Now, ideally we want to do this as well in the update function. So as soon as we update the information there, we update the label. And also we want to do the calculation of the price because the price is something that we were calculating every time we clicked. We were updating it all the time in the process function and we don't really need to have it there. So let's move it out here as well. And the price here, which is this value that we're going to tweak a little bit because it was getting out of hand. We're going to move it here as well. So now on the on button press, which is the function that we set there it's only going to check for the price remove that amount from our account and then update it we're going to be using this function when we load the game so we want to update it and set what's the value that is going to be and the price and everything else will come from that we are not going to change this for now but we can also get this inside of the update function and the less we have on the process functions, the better. So we are executing less things at the same time. So because we were setting here on the main scene, the values here from the script variables, it's going to give you some issues uh, if you want to calculate the price as we're going to be doing it here. So we're going to store that value on ready. Start price is going to be equal to price, which is the default. 
and we're gonna do this again when ready that means that when the scene is loaded we're gonna store that price and now we're gonna modify how it's calculated the amount is going to be the new value just in case like let's use this variable as well and the price that we're going to multiply it for is going to be the start price that way it doesn't grow exponentially it's always going to be the same but there's a case that if you set the amount to zero at the beginning it's going to multiply it by zero because this is going to be the new value zero per increment is going to be zero zero per zero zero let's add a check here first so if new value is not e it's equal to zero let's just set the price equal to the start price and else we do this operation the rest can stay as it is right now and as the last thing of all since we are going to be calculating the price now instead of on the process function in this update value we're just going to call it when ready update value and this is going to be amount which is the value that we want so these are all the changes we wanted to have in this uh, sub scene so let's save it and let's go back to the main one okay on the main one we will have to do a lot of changes as well first of all here this variable the data is not the same data as we are saving so that means that it will reset on each case and we wanted to have a, da a persistent data throughout the entire game we only want to update it when we load the game or when we save it to the drive so let's move this variable outside of it so it's going to be a dictionary which will contain the count which is going to be equal to the count same as we had here so now instead of having this variable here we can remove it and with data here we don't have to declare it we just load it from there so now let's save that new information into our file to save it we need to update this variable we have here with the current information that we have so in this case the data that count it will be equal to the current count that we have and for each auto clicker we want to track the amount that they have so since we have five auto clickers let's create first a dictionary here auto clickers which is going to be an empty array oops forgot a comma here inside this empty array let's do the default values that we need so in this case it's going to be zero because we start with zero that should be it we have five zeros there so now the default is always going to be that now we can do a for loop to check each auto clicker that we have on the scene so for a c let's call the auto clicker individually in now let's select this auto clicker container and get children get children this will give me an array with all the nodes that we have and we know that each node has a variable called amount which is the value that we want to get so in this case it will be ac dot amount the value that we are looking for and since we want to store that value inside this we need to first track the index so we are modifying them in order so index is going to start at zero and at the end of each iteration we're going to add a new one there's probably a better way of doing this if you know just leave a comment below but this is how i usually do it quickly it's probably not the best but i mean it works for me so now we want to access that so data and inside of data they so data and auto clickers and now the index is going to be equal to the amount so that way 
this is going to go five times. The first time is going to get this. Second time is going to save that. Third time is going to save that. Four, five, and we end it because it's only running five times. And each time we're going to get the value from each of those. The rest should stay the same. We already updated the data. We already updated the count. We already updated the auto clickers. So we save it. No problem. And now we have to update the ready because we want to load the data. This remember happens whenever you start the game. So we do exactly the same as we did here, but in the opposite direction. So let's start with the loop, the AC for the data of auto clickers in data that auto clickers. We create the index starting at zero. We add it. And now we get the container and get children. And the index value is going to be index. And now we can update value with our DAC. That way we are going to go through all these zeros. We're going to get, okay, this is one. Okay, so the first one has to be one, the second one. And remember, we use this variable because it's the one that we set on this auto clicker scene to update the value. Let's try it out because we did a lot of things we haven't saved yet. Let's try it out. And if you have any issue with this on the project that we were working before, just make sure to delete the save file before. Uh, on previous tutorial, we were only saving one variable, which is count, and now we're saving more. So each time you're doing these kind of things, just make sure to clear the saving uh, information before, and then you can continue. Uh, but let's try it out. Let's see, just the regular numbers. If I click up to 10, I could do the first two upgrades. Let's close it. Let's open it again. Now let's do the first update once. Okay, we got the auto clicker, the price increase. So let's do it twice. Okay, second one. Okay, like this. So we have two, it costs 20. Okay, let's close it. Let's open it again. And it seems to be the same as we left it. Let's buy some upgrades. Let's see, they are so cheap. Okay, so five, four, three, two, one. That way we know that all of them work. And let's close it and open it again. And we'll have it working properly. So this is the same concept that you can use for saving and loading things in all of the games. It's very interesting that on the documentation they create a different way of doing it. Instead of doing uh, like I did here with a group and all and going through all of them, like with a node and the children, they do it with groups. So they they set up a different group. So that way you get a easier way of you know like creating a dictionary. Like it's a very recommended read. I find it a little bit of an overkill, and I can imagine a lot of ways where this can be not really flexible for all of your needs so i prefer to do it the manual way and choosing which variables are we going to save are we going to delete discard calculate on the fly and uh, things like that um, because this way if let's say you are going to release a future patch on the game that will change the prices of things you don't really want to save the price as a different variable. You want to save how many they have and then calculate that afterwards. But maybe in your game, you really want to save the price as a separate variable so you can do the same or even like more complex things. But I prefer to keep track of all the things that you are saving and loading. So uh, that's it for today. This is like a very basic but complicated uh, tutorial but you have all the information you need here for saving and loading in games and the rest is, is creativity i really want to thank my new patrons dave and basman 12 i think thank you very much for your support 
if you have any questions or you want to propose any topic just I'll leave it there also as a side note I've been to the Godotcon recently and I'm gonna try to make a video about it I don't know I don't have a lot of footage I was a little bit shy when it came to start recording people's faces so if I can do something with it I will do it but otherwise if you want to know more about those kind of things I'm always on Twitter and you can follow there or just subscribe here and thanks so much and see you next time